The story begins as four valiant adventurers return to the royal city after defeating the demon king. The group comprises of Fear and the Elf Mage, Haida the Priest, Aizen the Dwarven Warrior, and Himmel the Hero. As they approach the city gates, Himmel thinks about finding a new job, and Firin is surprised he is already thinking about that. Himmel notes that even though they defeated the Demon King, they still have their lives ahead of them, and Haida says he just wants a job where he can drink, but Himmel reminds him he's a priest. Upon their arrival at the royal city, they are greeted as heroes by the people. The king officially expresses his gratitude in the castle, and there's a huge party at night. Himmel shares with his companions the king's plan to erect statues in their honor, but Firin remembers when the king only gave them ten copper when they left. As the night progresses, the group reminisces about their adventure of the last ten years, sharing the stories of their countless misadventures, like the time when they were almost executed by the king, and when Firin fell for a mimic trap. Despite these memories, Himmel says it was fun, and he's glad he got to go on adventure with them. Haida agrees with him, but Firin doesn't think much of it, since ten years for her isn't much time. The group goes on to enjoy the meteor shower, which is a spectacle that only happens once every fifty years. Firin knows a place with a better view, but Himmel tells her to just enjoy the moment, so Firin promises to take them next time. Himmel laughs thinking that it's fifty years away, but he agrees they should watch it all together again. The following day, Firin prepares to leave, and she tells the others that she's continuing her quest to collect spells over the next 100 years, but she assures them she'll drop by occasionally to visit. We see Firin going on all kinds of adventures, and after many years, she is looking for the horn of a shadow dragon. The old man says he hasn't seen a shadow dragon in over 30 years, but Firin remembers how they found one at the Demon King's castle. We learn that it's already been almost 50 years, so Firin thinks it's time for the meteor shower again. She returns to the capital, but when she sees Himmel, he is now an old man. The two reminisce, and Firin asks him about the shadow horn. We see he kept it safe, stored away in his house, but it emits an evil aura. Firin thinks he should have kept it somewhere else, but Himmel sees it as something precious that she entrusted to him. Firin sends the horn off using a bird, and she admires their statue in the town square. The two meet up with Aizen and Haida, and Haida is surprised that Firin hasn't changed at all. He thinks it's too early to see the meteor shower, but Firin says that the spot she wants to show them is a week away. The group travels together, and Himmel is reminded of the journey they shared all those years ago. He thanks Firin for bringing them back together, and they all enjoy the meteor shower. After some time, Himmel passes away. At his memorial service, some villagers gossip about Firin for not looking sad, but Haida and Aizen come to her defense, saying they aren't sad either. During Himmel's burial, Firin cries over him, regretting that she never truly got to know him. After the ceremony, Haida prepares to return to his home in the holy city. He tells Firin that his drinking habits from his younger days have caught up with him, and this might be their last time seeing each other. Firin wonders if he's afraid of death, but Haida reassures her that they have an eternal reward in heaven for saving the world from the Demon King. Before leaving, Firin tells Aizen that she wants to understand more about humans, and she invites him to join her, saying she could use a warrior, but he tells her that even he is getting old. Twenty years later, on the outskirts of the holy city, Firin gets lost in the woods. Luckily, a young girl named Fern comes to her rescue. Firin tells the girl she's looking for Haida, and she just so happens to be his helper. Firin is surprised to see that Haida is still alive, and he wonders why she came to visit. She notes that she owes him a lot, so she wanted to repay her debts before he dies. Haida asks her to take Fern as her apprentice, saying she has potential, but Firin refuses, thinking that apprentice mages often die in battle, so she doesn't want the girl to suffer that fate. Haida offers her a rare magic book that's said to have an immortality spell, and he asks Firin to help him decipher it. Firin says it will probably take her five years, and she asks him why he's afraid of death now, so he admits that he was just pretending to be brave the last time they saw each other. He wants a little more time, and before he leaves, he asks Firin to help teach Fern some magic. Firin finds Fern at the edge of a cliff, and she is impressed by her control of mana, because she concealed her mana so well that even Firin could barely detect her. Fern says that Haida told her she could become a mage if she could destroy the rock in the distance. She fires her magic, but the spell disappears before it reaches, so she wonders how she can improve. 
Fearon starts teaching Fern the basics of long-distance magic, explaining that it can take years to master. Fortunately, Fern already has great control over her mana, so she makes faster progress than most apprentices. As Fern continues to practice her magic, Fearon focuses on deciphering the magic book. One day, Haida asks Fearon about Fern's progress. Fearon tells him that Fern is learning quickly, and she assures him that she'll finish deciphering the spell before Fern becomes a full-fledged mage. But Haida suddenly collapses, and he loses his ability to walk. He confides in Fearon, saying it's a miracle he could walk for so long despite his age, and Fearon reassures him that she'll speed up deciphering the spell. After some time, Fearon asks Fern to pause her training and look after Haida. Fern refuses, and in a flashback, we learn that she once considered ending her life after losing her parents in the war, but Haida intervened, sharing a story of his friend who died while always helping others. He realized that preserving precious memories meant living, not hiding from the world, and encouraged Fern to live and learn to survive. After Haida saved her, Fern decided the best way to repay him was by developing the skills to survive. Touched by Fern's determination, Fearon allows her to continue her training, while she works on deciphering the spell. After a long period of training, Fern finally succeeds in destroying the distant rock. Meanwhile, Fearon manages to decipher the spell in the book, but she reveals that the book didn't contain any immortality spell, suspecting that Haida might have known this all along. Haida confesses that the sage would have used the immortality spell on himself if it had existed, and he explains that his main goal was to keep Fearon busy with deciphering the spell, so that she could train Fern to a competent level, because he didn't want Fern to be in her way when she eventually takes her as an apprentice. Haida urges Fearon to leave that place with Fern, because he doesn't want Fern to go through the pain of losing someone again. Fearon becomes emotional, and insists that Fern has been preparing for this moment, and it would be wise for Haida to spend his remaining time creating good memories with her. As she leaves Haida's room, Fearon asks him why he saved Fern, and Haida reveals that Hamel would have done the same thing. Eventually, Haida passes away, and Fern thanks Fearon for allowing her to repay her debts to him. Fearon pours alcohol over his grave as a tribute, before they both continue their quest together. Fern and Fearon are working in a pumpkin field, for a man who pays them with folk magic for making tea. Fern notices that they receive strange spells as payment, but Fearon reveals that collecting them is her hobby. Fern thinks they have different tastes in magic, but Fearon disagrees, saying they both love magic. In their next job, they meet an elderly herbalist who asks for their help in cleaning a statue of Hemel. The old lady shares a childhood memory of how Hemel saved her from a monster and expresses disappointment that the village neglected his statue after he died. Fearon criticizes Hemel for showing off by agreeing to have a statue made for himself causing the sculptor stress for 18 hours. After they finish cleaning the statue, the old lady suggests adding more color to the statue's surroundings. Fern tells Fearon to make flowers with her magic, but Fearon remembers that Hamel loved blue moon flowers, but she can't create a flower that she hasn't seen before. Fearon asks the old lady to teach them what the blue moon flower looks like and where to find it in exchange for their help. The woman tells them about it, but notes that she hasn't seen the flower in decades. The two set out to learn about the blue moon flower, and as they prepare to search, Fearon catches Fern with some seed rats, so Fern promises to release them into the wild. For the next six months, they search tirelessly for the flowers, but can't find them. Fern goes back to the herbalist, and vents how frustrated she is with Fearon's intense obsession with the blue moon flowers. The woman understands Fern's feelings, and gives her a bag of seeds from a similar flower. She tells Fern to explain her viewpoint to Fearon, recognizing that Fearon might see things differently as a non-human. Fern brings the seed bag to Fearon, and starts talking about how frustrated she is with her obsession on the flowers. But before their conversation gets too heated, a seed rat runs off with the bag. Fearon uses her magic to follow the rat's path, and they reach the top of the tower, where Fearon and Fern discover a large field of blue moon flowers. Fern struggles to completely understand Fearon's passion for magic, but Fearon reminds her that she also chose magic above everything else. They return back to Hamel's statue, and Fearon decorates it with the blue moon flowers, and the old woman thanks them for this. A few years later, we see Fearon and Fern walking around a city, as Fearon suggests splitting up to gather supplies. Fern wonders what Fearon plans to buy, knowing she has a tendency to buy unnecessary items, 
Fern thinks that Fearon won't spend their funds wisely, so she decides to follow her. Fearon visits an accessory shop, where she appears to be confused, not knowing what to buy, and she decides to buy a piece of jewelry before leaving. Fearon decides to head back to the inn, but Fern realizes that she hasn't done her shopping yet. Fern rushes to complete her shopping, but ends up being late to the inn. Fearon suggests that they have dessert, so they head over to the shop, where she tells Fern to order anything she wants, revealing that she's been saving money for this moment. Fern chooses a pudding, and Fearon remembers the time when Hamel predicted that she would have the same dessert. Fearon apologizes to Fern for not knowing her well, even though they've been traveling together for so long. She gives Fern the gift she bought from the accessory shop, and Fern remembers that it's her birthday. She opens the box and finds a beautiful hairpin inside. She thanks Fearon for the gift, and she is happy that Fearon is trying to understand her better. The next day, they leave the town, and Fern asks Fearon if there's a purpose to their travels. Fearon explains that it's mainly to satisfy her curiosity for new spells, but she also wants to retrace the adventures she had with Hemel. In the forest, they both engage in training. Fearon unleashes a powerful magic beam toward Fern, who summons a shield to protect herself. However, Fearon manipulates the beam and breaks through Fern's shield, telling her that they've had enough for the day. As they continue their journey, Fearon tells Fern that trying to maintain defense magic over a large area can quickly drain her mana, so she suggests summoning the shield to protect only specific parts of the body when needed. Fern wonders why defense magic consumes so much mana, and this makes Fearon realize that Fern hasn't read the magic history book she gave her, so she lectures her about the importance of magical theories. They arrive at a village, where they meet an old man who instantly recognizes Fearon. He offers to guide them to Qual, a demon that terrorized the village 80 years ago, before he was sealed away by Hamel's party. Fearon reveals her intention to destroy Qual, as the seal has weakened over time, but she hasn't told anyone about this, so she wonders how the man knew she was coming. He explains that Himmel used to visit their village every year until his death, and during one of those visits, Himmel mentioned that Fearon would come to destroy Qual when the seal weakens. Upon reaching Qual's body, Fearon touches it, and realizes that the seal is now unstable, so she decides to destroy Qual the following day. Later that night, Fearon asks Fearon why Qual was sealed instead of being killed. Fearon explains that Qual had become too powerful, because he had developed a deadly magic called the Zaltrak. This magic could penetrate defense spells, and decay any living matter it touched, leading to the deaths of many adventurers and mages. The next day, Fearon releases the seal, and Qual emerges, noting that it's been 80 years since he last saw Fearon. He inquires about the Demon King, but Fearon tells him that the Demon King was already defeated. In an attempt to avenge the Demon King, Qual unleashes his most potent attack, the Zaltrak, but Fern effortlessly blocks it, and he is surprised to see this. Fearon reveals that in the 80 years since Qual was sealed, mages analyzed and developed countermeasures against his magic, rendering it less powerful. Qual realizes that a magic shield consumes a significant amount of mana, so he starts attacking rapidly, but Fern employs Fearon's strategy, using the shield to protect specific parts of their bodies. While Qual is distracted, Fearon seizes the opportunity to finish him off, causing Qual's body to fade away. After the battle, the villagers express their gratitude, and Fearon recognizes the old man as the little boy who used to play with her skirt. He reveals that he is happy to see her again, saying he is glad that he trusted Himmel's words. The following year, Fern and Fearon arrive at a beach, where an old man explains the difficulties of cleaning up the shore due to the debris, and offers them a magic book, which he claims is written by the legendary mage named Flame, as payment for their help in cleaning the shore. After the man leaves, Fern tells Fearon that the book is a fake, and Fearon admits she already knew but wanted to assist those in need. Three months later, Fern has become accustomed to living in the village. When she returns home, she finds the house in disarray, and she wakes Fearon up, helping her prepare to complete their daily tasks. While cleaning, Fern expresses her thoughts on Fearon's sloppiness and laziness, wondering how she managed to fit in with Hamel's team. Fearon explains that she only got into trouble once, but eventually, they learn to tolerate her. Later that day, the old man visits Fern and Fearon while they're eating, wondering if they will finish their task before the New Year's festival. Fearon assures him they will be done in time, and the man hopes that she'll be there to witness the sunrise. 
The next day, Fearon reveals that it's the village's tradition to watch the sunrise on New Year's Day. Unfortunately, she hasn't had the chance to see one due to her poor sleep habits. Fern and Fearon manage to complete the task on time, and the old man invites Fearon to the New Year festival. As they return to their inn, Fern asks how Fearon plans to make it in time for the sunrise. Fearon says she'll stay up all night to ensure she doesn't miss it, but she ends up falling asleep. Fern wakes up on time, and she manages to get Fearon out of bed. They watch the sunrise, but Fearon doesn't quite grasp the beauty of it. However, when she sees how much Fern appreciates it, she starts to enjoy the view. In a flashback, we see Haida praying at some gravestones that belong to Aizen's family. Haida strongly believes that good deeds should be rewarded, revealing that he believes in the existence of heaven. However, Fearon is skeptical, as she mentions that magic hasn't been able to contact the dead, so she doesn't have a reason to believe in heaven or the afterlife. We see Aizen praying at the same gravestone, when Fearon and Fern come up behind him. He is surprised to see Fearon taking an apprentice, and she asks what she can do for him. Aizen mentions that she asked Haida the same question in the past, revealing that he and Haida used to communicate through letters when Haida was alive. Aizen takes them to a certain location, as he reveals that Haida predicted that they would find the notes of flame in that area. Fearon thinks they should check every large tree in the forest, but Aizen knows that it will take forever, and Fern wouldn't like that, because humans have a short lifespan. So to avoid upsetting her, they start searching right away, and they continue the search for several days, until Fern discovers another large tree. As they make their way to that tree, Fearon asks Aizen why he's so determined to find the notes. Aizen explains that he's doing it for Fearon's benefit, as the notes are rumored to contain spells that allow communication with the dead, which could give her the chance to talk to Haida once more, but she doesn't seem to be interested in his offer. When they arrive at the tree, Fearon realizes it belonged to her master, Flame. We learn that Flame told Fearon to return to this tree whenever she regrets not getting to know someone properly. She opens a door and finds a book that talks about communicating with the deceased. The book reveals that all the deceased are in heaven, which is located at the northern continent. Fearon also shares that the Demon King's castle is in heaven, and Aizen reminds her that she promised to do anything he wanted, so he asks her to find heaven and speak with Himmel. She agrees to this, but she mentions how she doesn't even want to go there. Fearon falls asleep on a carriage, as Aizen asks Fern if she thinks Fearon is a good master. She explains that she initially joined Fearon to find strange spells, but grew to understand how much Fearon loved her previous teammates. She thinks that Fearon doesn't like her, and that she only took her in as an apprentice because of the promise she made to Haida. Fern thinks that she's a strange person, and Aizen recalls how Fearon told them that she wouldn't take on an apprentice due to their shorter lifespans. Aizen thinks that Fearon is a good master, but he decides not to join them because of his old age, saying he would slow them down. Before Fern departs, he advises her to be prepared, as the journey will span a decade. In a flashback, Haida has a heartwarming moment with Fern. He tells her to be a good girl, and playfully warns her that if he were to meet his end, he'd come back to haunt her if she is mischievous. Fern asks if he'd visit her if she turns into a troublemaker, but Haida corrects her, assuring her that he will visit if she's good. Back in the present, we see Fern sleeping in a carriage, as Fearon tells her that they're approaching a village. When they arrive, they meet a villager who warns them about a dangerous mountain pass, telling them that there are rumors of ghosts kidnapping travelers who go there. Fern and Fearon decide to investigate the woman's claims, and they learn that many people have encountered the ghosts of their deceased loved ones. Fearon thinks that these encounters are the work of a higher demon, so she suggests that they should avoid this dangerous path, but Fern insists that they help the people by destroying this demon. The next day, they head towards the mountain pass, and Fern thinks that illusion magic is being used in that area. Fearon thinks it's the work of a notorious demon, which is known for its illusions that mimic the appearance of loved ones to lead victims into dangerous traps. Fearon notes that these illusions can be dispelled with strong offensive magic attacks, but she knows that it will be difficult to attack the image of their loved ones, asking Fern if she can do this. Fearon shares a personal experience, recalling a time when she had to shoot down an illusion of her beloved master, and it wasn't an easy thing to do. As they venture deeper into the woods, the fog thickens, as Fearon reveals that they are close to the creature. Fern sees an illusion of Haida behind her, and it tells her that it decided to pay her a visit because she's a good girl. 
Fearon notices that Fern is struggling, so she decides to help her out, but an illusion of Hamel suddenly appears. She thinks this is unusual, because she usually sees her master when she encounters an illusion. Fearon uses a powerful magic beam to destroy the illusion. The powerful magic clears away the fog, revealing the demon behind the illusions. Seizing the opportunity, Fern delivers the final blow, defeating the demon responsible for the illusions. As the dust settles, Fearon encourages Fern to keep moving forward, reminding her that they're now on the right path to finding the real Haida. They encounter a dragon resting in a canyon, and Fearon identifies the creature as a solar dragon, warning Fern about its fearsome reputation for defeating numerous adventurers. She points Fern to a magic book, and tells her that she is after it. Fern unleashes a powerful burst of magic, hoping to destroy it, but it has no effect, and the dragon awakens from its slumber. Fearon suggests retreating, and she runs away, leaving Fern behind. Fern catches up to her, but Fearon suggests that they should return to attack the dragon, saying they should be able to defeat it eventually. Fern doesn't want to do it, so Fearon resolves to seek help from a warrior. She recalls a tale shared by Aizen, about one of his apprentices named Stark, who resides in the region. They make their way to a nearby village, searching for Stark, and Fern is amazed at how peaceful the village appears, despite the presence of a dragon nearby. She asks Fearon why she wants the magic book, so Fearon explains that it's a spell that allows her to see through clothing, explaining that it can be useful for detecting concealed weapons. Their conversation is interrupted by an elderly woman, who informs them that Stark is eager to meet them. As they proceed to Stark's location, the old woman tells them about an incident from three years ago, when the solar dragon attacked the village. She praises Stark for standing up to the dragon, and driving it away. Upon arriving, Fearon introduces herself to Stark, who requests the elderly woman to provide them with some privacy. Fearon asks Stark for his assistance, explaining that if Stark can manage to keep the dragon occupied for 30 seconds, she will be able to destroy it, but Stark asks Fearon if he really has to do it. This question confirms Fearon's suspicion, and she asks him if he has any experience fighting any dragon in the past. He says no, and opens up about the truth behind his reputation. He confesses that when he faced the dragon, fear paralyzed him, rendering him unable to take any action, but the dragon spared him, and it departed from the village, as the villagers began praising him for chasing the dragon away. Despite this, Fearon informs Stark that he has until the following day to prepare for their battle with the dragon. Later that evening, as Fern and Fearon enjoy a meal in a local diner, the staff expresses their admiration for Stark, praising him for saving their village. Fern remains unmoved, and labels him a coward, but Fearon reminds her of her own retreat from the dragon, prompting her to reconsider her judgment. They make their way back to the inn, but Fern detects an unusual sound, and Fearon thinks that it's probably Stark, telling her to check it out. In her room, Fearon reflects upon the conversation she had with Aizen in the past, in which he mentioned that he had trained Stark, transforming him into someone capable of protecting others. Meanwhile, Fern moves closer to the source of the mysterious noise, and discovers that it is coming from Stark's relentless training, which is responsible for the enormous crack in the cliff. She asks him why he's still training, thinking he doesn't intend to fight the dragon, but he tells her that the villagers are happy because they believe that he is keeping them safe. She wonders if he is going to fight the dragon if it attacks the village, and he reveals that he is afraid of dying, but he wants to live up to his reputation as the hero of the village. He reveals that Aizen injured him in the past, thinking it must be because he's a disappointment. Fern believes that Stark will stand his ground, telling him about her first battle with a monster, where she experienced fear and started running away. But when she realized that she can't escape, she mustered up the courage to defeat the monster. Fern calls him a coward, but she believes in his resolve to protect the village, so she thinks that he will be able to face the dragon. The next day, they realize that Stark is nowhere to be found, so they prepare to fight the dragon on their own. But at that moment, Stark suddenly arrives, telling them that he will keep the dragon busy for a few seconds, but he thinks that he could end up dying. They make their way to the dragon, and Fearon notices that Stark is trembling, telling him that he's just like Aizen. We learn that when Aizen encountered powerful monsters, he also experienced fear, but he thinks that fear isn't a bad thing, saying it's the reason why he made it that far. Stark approaches the dragon, as he realizes that resolve is the only thing he needs. 
Fearon observes that the dragon is being cautious, confirming her suspicion that the dragon is actually afraid of Stark. He charges at the dragon, evading its attacks as he closes the distance, and we learn that Aizen attacked Stark, because he was afraid of how powerful his apprentice has become. Stark shatters the dragon's claws, and he clings to it as it starts flying away, causing him to lose his grip. It prepares to breathe fire, but he delivers a devastating attack, smashing it against the ground. He screams at Fern to fire, but Fearon stops her, telling him that he just killed the dragon. Stark is surprised that he was able to do it on his own, and Fearon praises him, telling him that he has exceeded her expectations. They get the book from the dragon's nest, then they go to the woods, where Fearon asks Stark what he plans to do next. He knows that Aizen wants him to join their party, so he tells her that he's going to tag along. They later reach a city, and they are about to enter the northern land, but the guard captain stops them at a checkpoint, telling them that nobody is allowed to enter, because the monsters are active. They think that the captain was rude, but Fearon knows that he was just doing his job, and they should study magic while they wait for the checkpoint to open. Fern overhears a conversation, where a man thinks that it would take years for the checkpoint to open, knowing the situation is pretty bad. Stark orders his favorite dessert, which he used to have with Aizen, realizing that he has grown up. Fern joins him, telling him that it could take years before the checkpoint opens, so they think about finding a way past it. Stark thinks about flying over the wall, but Fern reveals that a barrier will prevent them from leaving, so he asks around the city, trying to find a solution, but he realizes that the security is tight. Fern wonders why he's cooperating, so he tells her about Aizen, who used to share how much he enjoyed his adventure, but he is now too old to travel. So Stark thinks that he should experience the adventure and share it with Aizen before he dies. They see Fearon hiding in an alley, thinking she's being pursued, and they hide with her, but the captain finds them, begging for forgiveness. The governor apologizes, recognizing Fearon, and he thinks they are there to help with the situation in the north so he allows them to go through the checkpoint. Everyone watches them as they leave the city, but Fearon reveals that she doesn't like this kind of treatment. The gate opens, and Fearon recalls how similar it feels to when she started her adventure with Himmel and the others, so she thinks they're at the start of another journey. But that's where this video ends. Remember to like, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.